with the British Open. And moving back inside the Justice Aquatic Center, it is now time for the men's 50-meter freestyle. The world and American record is held by Tom Jager, who will be swimming in this contest. But his biggest rivalry will come from this man, Matt Biondi, 20 years of age. He is trying for his third gold medal of the meet. His first victory of this contest came in world record fashion in the 100-meter freestyle. It is simply two lengths of the pool when he set this world record. And after 50 meters, the crowd sensed his world record performance, and they did their job. They cheered him home. Take a close look at lane four. Matt Biondi finishes a full body length ahead of Tom Jager, who would finish second, and Mike Heath. He had this race hands down. His time, 48.74, the old world record time, 48.95. He shaved it by 11 hundredths of a second. He gave us his reaction to that performance. I felt after my morning swim, I had a real good shot. I wasn't trying to, wasn't trying to push everything in the morning and came up with what amounted to be, I think, the fifth fastest time all time. So uh, I felt I had a great shot to go after it at night, and I tried to get out um, faster than I had in the past and uh, came back pretty well, and there it was. Matt Biondi at six feet six inches is 200 pounds of pure power and speed. He's a little bit more than six feet uh, six inches. He's a quarter inch taller than I am. Quickly, the lane assignments. Kerska one, Kavanaugh two, Sauerland, then Biondi in lane four, Williams in five, Adam Schmidt in lane six, James Horn in lane seven, and Tom Jager qualifying very slowly is in the outside lane. 50 meters, it's in a controlled explosion. Any one of these guys could conceivably win, but let's take a look at lane two. Chris Kavanaugh, he was the gold medalist in 84. This is lane eight. Lane eight, Tom Jager, the world record holder, and because he's in an outside lane on the basis of a slow qualifying time, he's out of, out of uh, Biondi's view and has only half the turbulence Biondi has to deal with. Start is crucial right here. They're going to respond to the to the starter's command, a little beeper sound. And they're off in the middle of the pool. It is lane four, Matt Biondi. No swim cap on Matt Biondi in the outside lane. The world record holder in the white cap, it is Tom Jager. Jager and Biondi are virtually tied at this juncture at 25 meters. It is one length of the pool. When they touch, it is over. It is Jager and Biondi. I think Jager has it. We're not at the best angle. Biondi touched first. 22-33. He did it. A world and American record. Beautifully controlled race by Matt Biondi. He wasn't looking for Tom Jager. On the other hand, it appeared that Jager on the outside lane kept breathing to his left, looking for Matt Biondi. So by paying all the attention to the middle of the pool, Biondi controlled it from start to finish. I'd say he was probably a little bit slow off the gun. He'll probably do better than that world record at the World Games in Madrid. The 50-meter freestyle, not an Olympic event, but this year, for the first time, being included in the World Championship program on the base of, the, of this, Matt Biondi qualifies to swim a possible seven events at the World Games, tying Mark Spitz's Mark Spitz. record. Which That's has been right. held since 1972. That's correct. He has the potential. Now, he has already set a world record in the 100 free. He won the 200 free. This is his third first place finish as we take another look at the 50 meter sprint. Jager far left in lane eight. Biondi a little bit slow off the blocks. Dark hair right there in lane four. He enters the water a little bit behind everybody. I don't know why he was slow, so slow responding. But of course, at the end of the race, as we watch the finish here, half a body length lead off of everyone except Jager at the top of the screen, who came in just two tenths of a second back. I mean, and here's where you have to wonder: Biondi being six six, Jager being six three. In an event like this. Do those inches really make that much of a difference? You figure they took 26 strokes for the length of the pool. 26 times 3 inches, that's a body length. So, you know, it could have gone either way. Jager in second place will get a chance for a rematch in Madrid. Matt Biondi, the winner, world record 22-33. The old mark belonged to Tom Jager of 22-40. Jager finishing second, John Sauerland third, Adam Schmidt fourth. Our quick man on the deck, Rowdy Gaines, is standing by with world record holder Matt Biondi. Okay, Matt. Now, after this morning's swim, you said you were a little stiff. Now, tonight, are you pleased with your time? Well, you know, of course. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> that's my best time and best time of all, so, you know, of course, I'm pleased with it. I was, like I said earlier, I was just really concentrated on, on making the team, getting first or second, and, you know, it was a real fast heat, and I felt I really had to go to get in there, so, 
you know, I think that the time is a reflection not only of, you know, me getting ready to swim and the other guys pushing me to it. The 50 is such a quick race, but did you sense any of the other swimmers in the race? For, for example, Tom Jager out in lane eight. Yeah, he, he was too far over. You know, I think if I had seen him, it would have been um, bad for me, you know, to look that over there. It would have taken my stroke off. I did notice John Sauerland to my left because he's a quick starter and, and fast first 25 meters. So I was, I was wary of him, but I didn't know where Tom was. And, buddy, I'm not sure if you realize this, but do you know you have a chance to win seven gold medals in Madrid? Any comments? Well, it's, uh, you know, I got seven events. We got to come through on the relays, and, and I got a, a, a lot of competition. It's going to be my toughest meet in my career so far. So I just hope things are, go as good as they did today. I have a feeling I don't think I'm going to bet against them. John, Leandra? <laughs> I don't know that I would bet against him either. Our coverage of the championship trials continues coming up next, the 100 meter backstroke. Hotel, the Justice Aquatic Center, features a human performance laboratory and athletic club, and this pool is 25 yards wide, 50 meters long, and seven feet deep all the way across. So it's really advantageous to the swimmers who want to set a world record, and we've seen a few of those. Speaking of records, world and American mark in the 100 meter back is held by Rick Perry. Our lane assignments for this event. In lane number one, David Fairbanks. In two, Tom Jager, the man we saw just moments ago in the 50. Andy Gill will be in lane three. Charlie Soroki, the favorite, in lane four. Dan Beach will be in lane five. Mark Rodenbaugh in six. Jeff Rouse in lane seven. And Glenn Trammell, 19 years of age, will be swimming in lane eight. You know, I've not seen a single event that's been as wide open as this one is. Here's our top qualifier, Charlie Soroki, the only man to break 57 flat. He won a 56.9 in the earlier heats, and a lot of people are expecting a lot out of him. His challenge will come from the previous American record holder, right there, Tom Jager. Less than an hour ago, he swam the 50 freestyle sprint. He's back in it here, swimming two lengths of the field backstroke. He was a little bit sluggish in the preliminaries, but I think that we can expect a lot more out of him. He is the current short course record holder, so you can't count him out. Next, next, to, uh, next to the leader, Soroki, in five is Dan Beach. Dan was the winner of the 200-meter event, and so he's got the, the discipline to swim the stroke correctly and the endurance not to fade towards the end. So we can look forward to him making a big charge towards the end. And lastly, Mark Rodenbaugh, an NCAA champion in this event. He's swimming in lane six, and uh, he too had a disappointing preliminary, but he's still right in the thick of things here, and you only have to win this race once to be the leader in, in Madrid. An interesting development, I think, between Soroki and Beach, those being lanes four and five, is Soroki elected not to swim the 200 in this meet, whereas Beach did and, of course, won it. So Soroki in lane at number four, the man we should keep our eyes on. Of course, we can't cut out Tom Jager, the American record holder in the 100-yard backstroke, down in lane number two. If you're just joining us, our lanes are numbered from the bottom of the screen to the top, one through eight. The winner of this event will go to the World Championships in Spain, as will the runner-up. The start's going to be pretty crucial here. The athlete's going to be holding on to the starting blocks and pulling themselves somewhat out of the water, preparing for the gun. And this was your specialty, John Neighbor. One of my favorite races. Two lengths of the pool, real easy down and back. But again, it's somewhat like a controlled explosion. You've got to be able to go a rapid turnover with full efficiency, using no more than two, two to three strokes in the front to establish your pace. One hundred meter backstroke. Take your mark. Even though we are keeping our eye on lane number four, Charlie Soroki, another point about Dan Beach is he set his personal record in the qualifying with a time of 57.05. Looks so like he has tapered for this meet beautifully. Looks like Mark Rodenbaugh came at, came out of the start a little bit ahead, but he's got to do a little catching up now. Lane four, Charlie Soroki is our leader, but lane three, Andy Gill is still right with him. It's still too close to call at this juncture with the middle lanes touching almost simultaneously. And you're right, Rodenbaugh looks very good. Mark Rodenbaugh in lane six, Charlie Soroki in lane four. Those two are virtually tied. Jager down in lane two, just about out of it. People are yelling, Mook, that is Mark Rodenbaugh's nickname. They call him Mook, M-O-O-K. It is Soroki and Rodenbaugh, lane four and six, but here comes Andy Gill in lane three. Still very, very close. It depends on whose arm is in the right position to win this one. It will be lane number five, 
Dan beat our winner, his time, 56-74. And that is a record for him, a personal record, 56-74. And also, it's very, very close to Rick Carey's meet record, 56-74. The meet record was 56-71, so he just missed that standard. Mark Rodenbaugh, the man they were yelling, Mook, finished second with a 56-93. Well, I can make any observation from that race. It is wide open field. You take Rick Carey out of this race, and any one of four or five guys could have won that race. It came down to Dan Beach, mastering the stroke. He said he'd come on strong towards the back half of the race. He did. Mark Rodenbaugh needed a little bit more turnover to maintain his speed. He didn't have it towards the end, so he settled his first runner-up. Both of these two will have a rematch at the finish. Let's take a look at the start. This is where the race begins. The athletes facing backwards to the pool. You see Mark Rodenbaugh without the or Dan Beach without the cap towards the middle. He gets a relatively good start. These swimmers are diving backwards as they come into the turn. There's, there's a variety of ways to do this turn. You see on the left-hand side, it's, a, it's an upside down or backwards somersault with a little bit of a twist. On the right side, pretty much the same thing. Beach coming off the wall here in lane five, half body length behind, but he had it as he came to the wall. Beach in the middle, dark hair, no cap. He timed his arm perfectly. So he coasted into the finish with about two tenths of a second to spare. Dan Beach, the winner, 56-74 with a personal record. That's the fastest he has ever swum this event. Mark Rodenbaugh, the man they call Mook, finished second. Those two men will go to Madrid, Spain, while Charlie Soroki and Tom Jager have the opportunity to go to Moscow. We will now go down to Rowdy Gaines, who is with Dan Beach. Thank you, Leandra. I have to ask you, Dan, what was going through your mind the last 25 meters of the race? Uh, I knew I was out at the 50 a bit slower than most of the field. So when I got to the last 25, I was just concentrating on keeping my tempo high, really riding well into the wall, and keep my concentration up. Are you disappointed that the world record holder, Rick, Rick Carey, is not here tonight? Uh, would have been nice to swim against him, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's you know. true. Listen, um, what does Dan Beach have to do to go faster in Madrid? Uh, Dan Beach has to get in better shape, you know, especially in my 200 where they, I need the endurance. So I have about six weeks to work hard and uh, do much better, hopefully, in Spain. Well, personal record. He's swimming two events in Madrid. Congratulations. Back Thank to you, you, Leandra. Thank you very much, Rowdy Games. Get in better shape. Dan Beach, I'm sure you will. When we come back, the men's 200-meter individual medley. Don't go away. Our coverage continues after this. We are back with the McDonald's U.S. Swimming World Team Championship Trials in Orlando, Florida. I'm Leander Riley, along with John Neighbor and Rowdy Gaines. And our next event is the men's 200-meter individual medley, the world record held by Alex Bauman of Canada, American Mark held by Bill Barrett. And we have two record holders in this event right now. Let's go to our lane assignments. Jeff Pryor will be in lane number eight at the bottom. Working our way up is Matt Rankin, Mark Roncarno, William Stapleton, Dave Wharton in lane number four is the American record holder in the 400 individual medley. Then moving along to lane five, we have Bill Stapleton. And then we have Pablo Morales in lane three. He is the other record holder that we have in this event, Byron Burson and Paul Walls. And just to elaborate quickly on Morales, he set the world record in the 100 meter fly. So we have a standout field in this contest. That's right, Leandra. Pablo's having a hot meet, but the top qualifier on the morning swim, lane four, David Ward. And he's proven himself in the event twice this distance. This is the sprint mix. One length of the pool, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. He's, you know, the guy's got uh, all the endurance he needs. Does he have the speed? His challenge, of course, will come from world record holder in the butterfly, Pablo Morales, in lane three. There you see him. Very calm, very collected. He was a silver medalist in this event at the Olympics, and he's now trying to regain the uh, American record in this event as well from Bill Barrett, a guy who's retired a while back. Billy Stapleton in lane five. There you see him with the longhorn on his uh, swim cap. This man is a lot of people's favorite as the dark horse favorite. He's third place in this event in the, in the 400 meter event, so he also has endurance. I should note that in the preliminaries, Pablo backed off a little bit the last lap, so everyone's going to be gaining on him. We expect to see Pablo going out very fast in the first length, the butterfly. So we have Dave Wharton, the American record holder who won this. 400 meter individual medley. We have Pablo Morales, the world record for the 100 fly, going head to head with the dark horse being Bill Stapleton, lanes three, four, and five, the hot spots in this pool. If you were a betting man, John Neighbor, let me put you on the spot. Who would you put your money on? 
I like Pablo. He's having a hot meet. One world record, uh, very close to an American record in the 200. The, the guy is, is really enthusiastic. He, and certainly he's got the, the burden of responsibility of being a team leader on this team. And I don't think he wants to be known just as a butterfly. He's a very good individual medley specialist. And I think we can expect a pretty hot swim out of him. Pablo Morales swimming in lane number three. Dave Wharton in lane four. Billy Stapleton in lane five. Morales is 6'2". Wharton is 6 feet. Bill Stapleton, 5'11". I also kind of like lane two. That second from the bottom. Lane one's in the bottom of the screen. And uh, I like Brian Burson. He, he won this event at the uh, ESPN coverage of the uh, sports, sports festival in, in Baton Rouge and last you year. Were there. It's going to be fun to watch. Now. Wallace and Burson lanes one and two. Morales and Wharton in lane three and four. Stapleton and Carno in lane five and six. Rankin and Pryor seven and eight. The world record split at the end of this butterfly is 2781 by Alex Bauman. He's not a butterfly. Or Pablo is. We expect him to be going out very fast here. And he looks great. He's already got a body length and a half lead. 2781 is the split. And Pablo's already going 2495. He's well ahead of the world record pace. But then again, that was his best He's, stroke. And we also saw him do this in the preliminaries. And he died on the freestyle. So we'll see if Pablo Morales can hang on to this outstanding lead he has established after the butterfly and is carrying right through into the back stroke. He's going to have to save up his legs a little bit. See that foam coming up over his feet. That's showing a very strong kick under there. And he's going to need those legs in the breaststroke lane. Pablo Morales is our leader. Bill Stapleton is right now in second place. His split 55-66, well ahead of the world record pace. Well ahead. He's going for a world record here if he can keep this up. But this is his weakest stroke. Now, he has over a body length of, over the rest of the field. But we see Stapleton moving up, and Wharton is now starting to gain some ground. And it is a three-horse race between Morales, who's way out in front, and Stapleton and Wharton in lanes five and four, respectively. Okay, we're looking for a 133-69 split. Those are the backstroke flags to help the backstrokers determine where the wall is that you're seeing. He's at a 132-170. He's a second and a half ahead of world record pace. If he can hold on to this freestyle, he's got it. Let's see if he can hold on to it. We saw him fade before, but he looks awfully strong now. And the crowd is doing everything that they can to bring this man home. 20 meters remaining in the men's 200-meter individual medley. The world record, 201.42, held by Alex Bauman of Canada, now in jeopardy from Pablo Morales, who is just a couple of meters away from the wall. And our clock shows 202. He does not break the American record, but he did break the American record, not the world. He did establish a new American standard. Yeah, he was fading a little bit on the freestyle. The field was coming on very strongly, but looks like all he wanted was to win that race. He went out for it. He really wanted that world record. You don't you don't go out that fast unless you're prepared to handle some pain. 202.23, his time, the old American record by Bill Barrett set in 1983 was 202.68. So it was very, very close, but Pablo Morales has set his second record of this meet. He set the world record for the 100 fly and now the American record for the 200 IM. And of course, he won the 200 fly. Now, you know, when he came off the wall, started the freestyle, he didn't have a whole lot left to give. And you can see how the field is really closing on him. But he had enough to out-touch the field by three-quarters of a body length. He has himself a new American record. And he's now the lead contender for the United States to beat Alex Bauman from Canada at the World Games in Madrid, just a month and a little bit away. Our result panel, Pablo Morales, 202.23. It is an American record, now official. Dave Wharton finishing second, Billy Stapleton finishing third, and Ron Carno, the 19-year-old from Maplewood, New Jersey, finishes fourth. Now let's go down to Pablo Morales, who's getting ready to be interviewed by our Rowdy Games. Thank you, Andrew. I'm down here with Pablo. Pablo, John Neighbor said before the race that you didn't want to be known as just as a butterflyer. Do you think now you've come in your own right as an IMer? Well, the, the IM is always something that I've wanted to improve in. I've always respected the guys who can put together a good IM and, and challenge the rest of the world. That's, I always believe in, in being as diverse as you possibly can, and that's something I've been working on the past few years. Before the race, you told me that this morning you backed off at the 150. Did you see David and the rest of the field coming on, coming on to you uh, toward the end of the race? I certainly did. I was... I was really hurting coming home, and I was just thinking legs. Finish with my legs, kick really hard, and get into the wall. Cause 
My arms were pretty, were pretty useless at that point. Yeah, I definitely saw Dave coming on. Well, I said he was a versatile swimmer, and I sure meant it. Congratulations, Pablo. Back up to you, Leandra. Thank you, Rowdy. Pablo Morales, a sports writer for the Stanford Daily, where he attends school, Stanford University. Three firsts for this young man. We'll be back with some more victories. It's 200 meter butterfly. 200 meter butterfly competition. Mary T. Maher owns the world and American record 205.96. It was a standard she set back in 1981. She was just 16 years of age. A 1980 and 1984 Olympia who won three gold medals in 84. It was natural for Roddy Gaines to ask her about staying in competitive swimming. I mean, is it still as much fun as it was in 1979 when you won the Pan Am Championship? <laughs> um. It's funny because a lot of times um, it's not as fun, and I'll be real honest with you, a lot of times I'm real tired of swimming, but it's still fun enough and the good times that it can keep me going and get me through the bad days and, and whatnot. And, you know, I'm old enough to know now that it, life can't be fun every day, so I just try to get through those bad days until the end of the season, and, and I know those, that's when the good days will come along and when I can reevaluate whether or not I want to continue. She's not having a bad day in this meet. She's already won the 100-meter fly, finished second in the 100 and 200 freestyles. She's also a childhood development major at Berkeley and wants to be a teacher. Let's go now to our lane assignments. Swimming in lane one, a youngster we've seen win two events already in this competition, Michelle Griglione in lane two, it is Julie Gorman. Lane three, the first we've seen of Tiffany Cohn, a standout Olympian in 84. Mary T. Maher in lane four, Kara McGrath in five, Kelly Davies in six, Patty King from Nashville in seven, and Erica Hansen from Pennsylvania is in lane eight. You know, Leandra, I don't think anybody can challenge the great Mary T, but the fight is for second. Two swimmers from this event will compete in the World Games. Right next to Mary T is Kara McGrath. She's two and a half seconds behind her in the preliminaries, but she's placed third in the 100 butterfly, and she really wants to earn her berth on that World Championship team. The other person just as eager to earn a berth is Tiffany Cohen. Two gold medals in the distance freestyles in 1984 and hasn't even been able to qualify for finals in this event. There you see her. This is not her normal event. She's a distance freestyler. She's trying the distance butterfly to get herself on that world championship team. So we're going to see the fight for second place being very exciting. And of course, uh, Mary T. Maher is going to be trying to break her own American record in this event. A record, by the way, that puts her ahead of most of the men who competed in this event here at the uh, competition in Orlando. So she's so far ahead of the field, it's remarkable. And so far ahead of the rest of the world. She's still four or five seconds ahead of everyone else. Ladies, 200-meter butterfly. Take your mark. Lane four, Mary T. Maher. Mary T's strength will come in the back half of the race. She plans to have a body length lead at the end of the 100. So it's going to be uh, get ahead quick, hold your distance, and then begin to exert more pressure and pull away. Already she's pulling away. It has been said that if she can keep herself to 24 strokes per length, she can break the world record. So if you're a butterflyer and you are watching this meet next time you go swimming, see if you can go 50 meters in 24 arm pulls means they're packing a lot of power. Think about it, 50 meters, that's two meters per pull. That's a full body length that's getting perfect efficiency from each stroke. The other thing Mary T does well is she keeps her body low to the water. Her hips come up as she dives down with her shoulders. Notice how she dives down, her head goes underneath the surface of the water on the entry, and then the kick pulls her head out for the breath, coming back around again. So uh, this is what she does better than anyone in the world. That 50 meter split that you saw, 28.86, was ahead of the world record. Now she must touch in less than 101.41, and she is at one minute flat. So she forth. is ahead of the world record, something she has not attained since 1981. She's 21 now. She was 16 then, and it's been a long road back for her to get into this time frame. Mary T. now more than a body length ahead of the rest of the field. Lane five, Kara McGrath is in second. Lane two, Julia Gorman is in third. It looks like Tiffany's dropped out at this point, but the crowd's beginning to sense that this is Mary T.'s race. With a big lead, the water becomes still in front of the swimmer, which is an added advantage. She's way ahead still. 133.69 was her world record split. She just did 132.63. She's going for it. She's going for it. She's keeping uh, extreme efficiency on her stroke. Watch her hands come in and go out. Listen to the crowd. They're going crazy as our clock ticks. 
157-158. Again, 205-96 is the record. 201 is the clock. 202, 203, 204. She could do it. No, she does not. 206-39. The time so close for Mary T. Maher. 206-39. But does that not set the stage for Madrid? It certainly does. You can see how disappointed she is that she didn't get the record. She was going for it, but frankly, that's as fast as she's been in five years. That's a remarkable performance for Mary T. She's certainly back in top form, and that's got to allay suspicions of retirement for at least a couple of years. Oh, she wanted that. You can tell how frustrating it must be to hurt for two and a half minutes and not get the record. Oh, no, you see it. You yeah, see it. There's real disappointment there. She felt good. You can tell that she felt good. Let's take a look at her style again. It's a scene from the water level. See how she dives forward, her hips come out of the water, she's plunging down into it on the entry, and then her kick pulls her body up out of the water for like that a breath. Just yes, like a dolphin. Exactly. Up and down. Now that stroke is still the same as she's coming now towards the finish. The last two strokes, she reaches into the wall, her stroke was still good. The second place, the same thing. Three body lengths back, but a pretty good undulation there into the finish for Kara McGrath in second. Third place, of course, went to Kelly Davis. She was swimming in lane six. So let's recap what happened. 206.39 for Mary T. Maher, so close to her world standard of 205.96. I would say that she is going to be very primed for Madrid. Kara McGrath in second, Kelly Davis is in third, and Julia Gorman finished fourth, and Tiffany Cohn was shut out from the World Championship and the Goodwill Games. 1986 is not the year for Tiffany Cohn. But a woman who is having a good year in 1986 is with our Rowdy Gaines. She certainly is, Leandra. Mary T., you pulled away early. You won by over four seconds. How does that affect your motivation for a race like this? Um, well, I guess um, I'm kind of used to competing against the clock, and I know what I need to do to do the times I want to do. So um, I just try to keep my mind on the race and do what I need to do. You think you could have gone a little faster if you had somebody pushing you? Um... Well, it's something I wonder about. You know, it, I think at times it would be nice to have someone in there, but at the same time, um, not having someone right next to me allows me to keep my concentration on my own race. Well, if you don't know already by now, this lady right here is the queen of American swimming. Back up right. to you, Leander. Thank you, Rod, and we wish her the best of luck in Madrid. When we come back, we will continue with our coverage of the McDonald's U.S. Swimming World Championship Trials in Orlando, Florida. Justice Aquatic Center, as you take a look at the roof, it's a hydraulically controlled roof. They can have indoor or outdoor competition depending on the weather, and we've had kind of a blend in this competition. Right now, we are ready for the women's 50-meter freestyle. The world record was set by a Romanian just a few weeks ago, Tamara Kostas. The American record held by Dara Torres, who set that in 1984, July 21st to be specific. Now, we do have an outstanding swimmer in this event, Jenna Johnson. She set the American record in the 100-meter freestyle. Rowdy Gaines caught up with her earlier and asked her about that record-breaking performance. Well, I'm really happy how my freestyle's been going lately. Um, my freestyle's been feeling really good, and um, I'm really confident in that. I plan to do the same thing at World Games, hopefully go faster. Hopefully go faster at the World Games, and Jenna Johnson wants to go faster in this event, the 50-meter freestyle, one length of the pool. Her competition will come in the forms of lane one, Laura Walker, lane two, Kathy Coffey, lane three, Jenna Johnson, who we just met, lane four, Lisa Dorman, Angel Myers will be in lane number five, Kirsten Wengler in lane six, Dara Torres, the American record holder in lane seven, and Courtney Madsen will be in the outside lane. You know, one length of the pool can go to anybody. Dara Torres is known for explosive speed. She stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, just 2 inches shorter than Jenna Johnson. She is the American, or the American record holder in this event, so a lot of eyes have been focusing on her. And the fastest qualifier or is probably here, lane 4, Lisa Dorman. She stands 5 feet 6 inches tall. A lot shorter than the two, but both women, Dara and Jenna, said that they feared this woman. She's powerful. A little spark plug from Walnut Creek, ready to go fast. And they both feel that that's their ne main nemesis in lane four. Just 17 years of age, Lisa Dorman. Oh. Now the start is so important in this event. Lane start, one length of the pool. It'll end in approximately 25 seconds. Lane four, Lisa Dorman 
is establishing herself as an early leader. But staying right with her is Jenna Johnson. It is between lanes three and four. Angel Myers is still in on it, though. This one is awfully close to call. I say Lisa Dorman in lane four is breaking away. Jenna Johnson, I think, just out-touched her. She did. 25-69 her time. Not the American record. Dara Torres' record stays intact. 25-69. Jenna Johnson out-touches Lisa Dorman, who performed at 25-72. Three hundredths of a second. Not far back at all. It was the difference between long stretch and rapid turnover. Jenna Johnson, with the longer reach, was able to continue her fast pace, whereas it seemed that Lisa Dorman began to spin her wheels a little bit towards the end of the race. Everybody exploded off the blocks with a fair and even start. Lisa Dorman took off and established herself perhaps a two-foot lead. Let's take a look at the start, the most crucial part of this explosive race. Everyone's off at the blocks. Lane number three there. Jenna Johnson was the quickest response off the gun, but immediately coming to the surface, lane four, Lisa Dorman began to establish herself. Race there in the middle, it's the difference between a manicured fingernail and, and someone who bites theirs. So there was literally just hairs, fractions of a second, and Jenna Johnson's longer reach made the difference. Lanes three, four, two, and five. So the entire inside of the pool was the lead. We're the winners, as we see by our result panel. Jenna Johnson, 25-69, not a record, but good enough to get her to Madrid. Lisa Dorman, Kathy Coffin, and Angel Myers rounding out the top four finishers in this sprint freestyle event. Let's go now to Roddy Gaines. Thank you, Andra. Jenna, I want to know, what did you have to do after this morning's prelims to get ready for this race mentally? Uh, first of all, I needed some sleep physically. And then I just had to get up and get zippy. Now, I know you know who the East Germans are. Do you think right now, do you think the East Germans, do you know, do you think the East Germans know who Jenna Johnson is? I hope so. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I think they do. Back up to you, Leander. Thank you, Rowdy. If they haven't heard for, about her before, they certainly will after this meet's over with. We will continue with our coverage of the World Team Trials coming up next, the men's 1500 meter freestyle. And the men's 1,500-meter freestyle is already underway. Vladimir Selnikov set the world record in Los Angeles back in 1983. George DiCarlo holds the American mark. He set that in 1984. Our lane assignment, Cisna 1, Uch 2, Mlowski in lane 6, Jeff Kostoff in lane 5, Ben Jorgensen 4, Jeff Irwin in 3, Scott Brackett in 2. And the surprise would have to be Matt Sitlinski qualifying for the outside lane. But the story is he's so far out in front. He hasn't lost the race since the second hundred. I mean, he's assumed the lead at 150 meters, and he's just extended it the whole way. This is the longest swimming event on the Olympic or World Championship program. In the next longest event, the 400 meters, Setlinski got second place behind Dan Jorgensen, and here comes the rub. Dan Jorgensen is now in second place. So this is a little revenge battle going on here. Uh, Setlinski has a comfortable five-second margin. He's repeating 101s per 100 meters, and at this rate, he's got this race locked up. No record pace. But still, it's a grueling challenge between these two swimmers. To put it in perspective, 1,500 meters is 30 lengths of the pool. And you said down in each round of this event, you think of it simply as 100-meter races, a series of 100 meters, and you try to stay around the one minute mark. You want to get into a rut, into a rhythm, take the same number of strokes per 100, take the same number of seconds per 100. And Sedlinski, by the nature of qualifying in an outside lane, has had to do this totally on his own. He's had no pacing from the rest of the field, and he's really, he's doing it by himself. Lane one, our leader, Matt Sedlinski, six feet tall, 152 pounds, just graduated from Florida. He's really become the heir apparent to collegiate distance swimming, and Dan Jorgensen, the high schooler, now entering SC in the fall, is going to be his main challenge. There you can see way in the distance in lane number four, his closest challenger, Dan Jorgensen. In second place and a good five, six seconds behind the leader, Matt Sedlinski. You can see Dan breathing to his left, looking ahead, now looking behind, but looking ahead usually trying to see how far do I have to go to catch Sedlinski. Frankly, I think the race is out of out of the challenge here. With two lengths to go, the officials ring bells over each swimmer's lane to tell him this is it. Last chance, give us your best shot. Right now it is Matt Sedlinski, who lives in Lake Worth, Florida, way out in front, and a valiant Dan Jorgensen trying to catch him. You know, this is the only time a race of this length feels good. When you've got a five-second margin with two lengths to go, you say, I've got it. 
now it's easy to swim hard. It's easy to swim fast. I think in this event, the only time this race feels good is when it's over. <laughs> so Matt Fitlinski trying to be encouraged by the crowd. And you have to work hard in an event that lasts 15 minutes. The crowd's been yelling faithfully throughout. You know, most freestyle races, the turn is a place to rest. In this, it's doing a grueling sit-up. Your stomach muscles are absolutely spent by pulling of your arms throughout the whole race. The turn's hurt, and he's going for the finish now. And a good feeling is at hand. The American mark of 15.01 has already been surpassed. It is now 15.08 on the clock with Matt Spitlinski heading for home. He is our winner with a time of 15.12.73. I have to think the outside lane was a benefit to Matt Sitlinski, and also beating the man who beat him in the 400 has got to feel even better. That time, 15, 12, 73, if it holds up, will be a meet record. George DeCarlo set the meet record. It was 15, 17, so by five seconds, the meet record has been eclipsed. Well, he was holding minutes, 101s in the last 1200s here. Looked very, very strong. He found himself a nice little niche, and he stayed with it the whole way. He swam his own race, and he deserved the win. Our result panel. It is official. Matt Siplinski, the winner with a meet record, 15-12-73. Dan Jorgensen finishing second. Jeff Irwin in third, and Scott Proctor is in fourth. It's interesting to note that after each event, there is a lactic acid blood test that is conducted for physiology uh, education. And I'm sure there's a lot of lactic acid in the body of our winner of the 1500 meter free. Thank you, Andra. Matt, you made your move early on. I want to know, was, was that in your game plan the whole time and why? Well, I wanted to get out, you know, uh, pretty good at uh, ways ahead of them, but I didn't want to be too much because I, I knew they'd have a lot coming back. But after about the 500, I saw they were still pretty far behind, so I just tried to maintain where I was. You qualified seventh in the outside line. You think that helped you? Um, I don't think it made that much of a difference. Uh, I just tried to qualify yesterday. That was my main goal. Well, congratulations. Nice swim. Thanks. Up to you, Andrew. Matt Sitlinski is not even winded after swimming for 15 minutes. Had a good clip. When we come back, we'll have the women in the water. The backstroke is next. more cars on the streets of Austin, the greater the demand for... Women's 200-meter backstroke. The world record was set in 1982 by Germany's Cornelia Sirsch. The American record was established this morning by Betsy Mitchell when she bettered her own mark with a 209.96 by almost two seconds. The old record was 211. As you look at this Olympic silver medalist, she is enjoying a victorious meet. She has established herself as the preeminent woman in swimming, particularly in the backstroke. She has swum this meet methodically. The 20-year-old from Marietta, Ohio, which is near the city of Cincinnati, had a game plan that she has executed beautifully. She broke her own American record in the 100-meter backstroke that you are looking now. Betsy Mitchell, 101.20, and Mahoney finishing second. In addition to that blistering performance, Betsy broke her own American record in the 200-meter backstroke. She spoke with us about her performance. 200. I have a little bit more trouble with just because it's longer and I'm more of a, of a real sprinter, but um, my main plan of attack for the 200 is the third 50. You know, you just have to go after it again like it's a fresh new 100 on the second half of the race and, uh, you know, just, just hit, the last, uh, hit the last 50 with my legs. There she is in the water preparing for this, the final event of the meet, by the way. She is so dominant in the backstrokes that it, some people are even claiming that it hurts the, hurts the sport because a lot of people <laughs> give up. All right. Catherine Caprillis will be swimming in lane number one. Tori Freeze in two. Holly Green in three. Betsy Mitchell in four. Followed by Hayes, Barr, Donahue, and Schluter. But it is Betsy Mitchell in lane number four who is expected to walk away with it. In the prelims, she was five one hundredths off the world record. You can't blink your eyes. Five one hundredths of a second. Back, Okay, good morning. That was a nice start by Betsy Mitchell. The question is, she's a racehorse. She loves to go against the field. In the preliminary, she had the luxury of racing the clock. Now one wonders, is she going to go for the record, or is she going to settle for the win? It looks like she's going for the record. It would be nice if she was pushed. Right now, Tori Trees in lane number two is her closest rival, but things are still a little too early to predict. 200-meter backstroke is four lengths of the pool. And coming out of the first turn, it is Betsy Mitchell. 
Already a full body length ahead. She's got herself a pretty good brace going here. Ahead of world record pace. Look at her, how still her head is. She's rotating her shoulders while she focuses her eye on the ceiling above her. So she keeps a still head that tells us the race is under control. Her split after 50 meters was 20, or was five hundredths of a second ahead of the world record. So not only is she ahead of the pack, she's ahead of the clock. World record pace in the 100 backstroke. She's looking for a 102.85. 102.64. I think the crowd senses we might be onto something here. She was well ahead of the world record pace at the 150 in the prelims. She didn't have as good of a 450. And the minute the clock settled and showed us that split, the crowd came to life because they know now that she is a full body length plus ahead of the field. They have to encourage her to go faster. Look at that foam boiling on top of her feet there. That's a rapid whip action kick beneath the water's surface, indicating a lot of lung energy. She, her oxygen is still strong. 135.43 versus 135.91. She's ahead of the split. I think she had a rocky turn, though. I don't know if that's going to slow her down. We'll have to check this split coming in. She looks great. She's not concerned about the crowd. She's got smooth water in front of her, and she's keeping her head very still. Crowd's going wild. She's 10 meters from the finish. Betsy Mitchell way out in front of the field and headed for a world record. 209.91. The world record... Away. Oh, she did it by 1.3. Wow, did she do it? She demolished that record. Blew right through the nines into the eights. Ooh, look at her face. An outstanding performance. Pulled away from the crowd, but she remembers she had total control. Her head wasn't rocking. Her shoulders continued to roll, and a dynamite kick. Boy, that is that is quite an accomplishment. When that record was set in 1981, people said that wouldn't be touched for a long time. 1982, rather, when Cornelia set that from East Germany, they said, she's got to be on drugs to go that fast. And this woman has done it right here. What a fantastic performance. It might easily be the performance of the meet. No world record was shattered by that, by that much. Betsy Mitchell wins it. Obviously an American record and a world record along with it. That's her coach, Richard Quick. Coach of the National Women's Team, coach of Texas, and the Texas women won the NCAA title this year. Last meet of the, uh, last event of the meet. What a way to finish. Standing ovation by the crowd. Well That's deserved. Good. And she swam it so beautifully. Totally controlled. The result panel, there's the world record, 208.60, the old standard, 209.91. Boy, did she break that one. Holly Green finishing second, Andrea Hayes third, and Tori Trees finishing fourth. And now, 1984 Olympian Rowdy Gaines is with 1984 Olympian Betsy Mitchell. Thank you, Andra. I was talking to your coach, Richard Crick, earlier, and he said you really backed off this morning in the 200, and you were only four 100s from uh, the world record there. Did that really help your confidence tonight? Very much so. Um, I was really trying just to qualify this morning. I wanted to go 214 or so, um, and I just, I popped a 209. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Um, this morning felt really good, but I knew I could go faster because I had backed off. The crowd was so, it had to be the loudest I've heard yet. Did that, could you hear them? Did that oh, yeah, de very definitely. I could definitely hear the crowd, and the crowd's been great all week, but uh, I heard the crowd this morning, and I knew I was probably going a little too fast, but tonight when they roared, I just said, all right, let's go. What does Betsy Mitchell have to do now to get ready for those East German women? Yeah, I need to go back and I need to train really hard for about three weeks. I need to really get back into it and uh, go about 8,000 meters a day, um, training pretty hard. And most of all, I need to uh, realize that they're not unbeatable and that now maybe I'm the one they have to come after instead of me going after them. You don't have anything to worry about. Congratulations. Thanks, back up to you, Leandra. Thank you, Rowdy. Betsy Mitchell said she didn't know how she did it. She popped the 209. Well, she did it with hard work, and she's got some more in front of her. We'll be back with a recap in just a moment. In this meet, nine records went by the wayside. Four of them were world records. So let's give another salute to our champions. Pablo Morales setting the world record in the 100-meter butterfly. Matt Biondi in the 100 free and again in the 50 free. And, of course, the last lady of the evening, who was first in the 200 back, Betsy Mitchell.
American records fell by the wayside in this competition as well. Jenna Johnson, David Wharton, and again, Pablo Morales set new standards, as did Dan Jorgensen, and again, Betsy Mitchell. This time she did it in the 100-meter backstroke. Right now, let's get some final comments from our John Neighbor. Thank you, Leander. From where I was sitting watching the events, I saw an awful lot of really big swims, and that's good. But I saw them from a very small number of big names, and that's bad. We got multiple winners, the Betsy Mitchells, the Matt Biondis, the Jenna Johnsons, repeatedly doing well in their events, but we need more depth. We need thirds and fourth placers to be right in there in the thick of it. So in that sense, we've got a little bit more work still to do. Now, Rowdy Gaines, you were here on the pool deck. You watched the athletes get out. How about their spirit, their attitude? How do they look? I tell you, when they get out on the deck, John, they're so happy now. They're so enthusiastic about, about the way things are going. After 84, with the graduation of so many swimmers, we were young. We were kind of scared, but now it's two years later. And I think they're really getting positive about what's going to happen, not only this summer, but about in 1988. Certainly. Now, on a personal note, Rowdy, compare being in the water breaking records with being on the deck asking about them. I didn't know if it was possible to get more nervous swimming in front of two billion people than it was right here, but I think it is now possible. Well, you did a fine job. Thank you, Rowdy. Back to you, Leander. Once again, your talent surpassed your nervousness. Congratulations to all of our swimmers who did a fine job. Thank you, John Neighbor and Rowdy Gaines. I enjoyed working with both of you. Our aerial facilities were provided by Dolphin Helicopter of Orlando, Florida. The McDonald's U.S. Swimming World Championship Team Trials were brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And once again, congratulations to U.S. Swimming for keeping the program on top of the world.